Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day, and today's deck is Landfall Life Gain. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing really well today. Uh, I'm hoping I can get everything recorded ahead of time, so I'm not struggling next week to keep up. It's been a very busy couple of weeks, uh, but we're back. We're, we're staying with it. I guess you guys really didn't miss anything. We've been doing our normal videos, but it's been a bit of a struggle to stay on top of things uh, with summer around the uh, kind of hitting with uh, Caitlin being back home and that kind of stuff. I just want to make sure that I'm being accommodating of everyone. So I'm doing the best I can, guys. Uh, but today we have got a really exciting deck. It's a life gain landfall deck. Now, this is built around some very interesting lands from Streets of New Capenna. This is also built by Legend VD. Uh, who I will link down below. Please go check that out uh, or go check him out. Great content, amazing channel. Go hang out with him. It's a it's an absolute blast. Uh, the way this deck works uh, it is obviously around landfall. So the idea being that you gain a lot of uh, value by by throwing lands out there. So we've got the little fledgling here. Uh, we've got Lotus Cobra to ramp us. Uh, we've got the Felidar Retreat, which is really kind of the big spell here. Uh, but to really capitalize on that, we're also a Splendid Reclamation deck. And what this does is work extraordinarily well with the uh, interesting little, I don't know what you would call these lands or what the actual term is, but sacrifice lands, I guess. Uh, they interplay, they get sacrificed immediately, and you go fetch up basic lands with them and gain a life. Uh, now, what's nice about this is it does everything you want in this deck. It provides landfall triggers, two of them, in fact, uh, unless you whiff on the land, which does happen. Uh, but it also gains you life, which works extraordinarily well with things like the Moon Dancer, uh, which will smooth out the draws, get bigger as we go along, uh, and really start to take over the game. It also works extraordinarily well with Voice of the Blessed. Uh, we do have this, uh, Lissetti, Dean of the Root. We're not playing Valentine, but uh, whenever you gain life, you can pay one, and if you do, you put a one one counter on each creature you control and they gain trample until the end of the turn so really a huge synergistic game finishing kind of piece to this deck uh and it's fascinating, guys. I, I've only tested it a little bit, but my goodness, is it fun. We may not win every game, uh, at least in my experience. We haven't been able to get, like, it's, it's not like an undefeated style deck. Uh, now, maybe we'll we'll be proven wrong here, but I really do like this list. I think it's a really fun one, and I love the fact that it capitalizes on these brand new lands uh, that we're really getting to see kind of do their thing, especially with Splendid Reclamation. So we're going to give this a shot, guys. We're hopefully going to have some fun with it, hopefully get some wins. And again, Legend V. Thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you sharing this list over on Nather Hub. Let's give it a shot, guys. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Now, this is a pretty interesting starting hand. This is pretty pretty normal, unfortunately, that you do get uh, quite a number of these lands, of course, in the opener, uh, which is fine. It happens. Um, let's go here. Let's pull a planes. Uh, it's nice when you can get an untapped land on like turn two or something just so you can play a moon dancer or maybe a voice of the blessed but uh, this certainly sets us up quite it uh, quite well later on well and there we go look at that see we did it fantastic uh, totally don't think we're gonna keep this moon dancer around to be honest but that's kind of okay we've got a way to to really capitalize on it regardless because we've got another in hand so I'd love to get the voice of the blessed down before doing anything else, but we'll see what happens. Um, I'm just gonna take it. Not going to uh, to push that. Uh, interesting. All right, well, let's go this route since we can't go Voice of the Blessed quite yet. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. This is gonna trigger the landfall, which is great. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. This also triggers the life gain and the landfall again. Um, I actually think we do want the land here. Uh, interestingly, this opens up the opportunity for a Felidar Retreat, which is certainly the big takeover card here. Uh, and so we're gonna hope to uh, to capitalize on that. What's nice about this is the incidental life gain, while it's not necessarily like massive life gain by any means, it does open up opportunities for us to really take over uh, against these aggro-y kind of decks. We're not just dying immediately, which is really nice. So we'll see how this one goes. All right, uh, so we can just drop the Felidar Retreat. Alternatively, though, I kind of, I you know, I kept that land on top, and now I'm kind of regret not regretting it, but definitely thinking maybe we could have done something different. But this seems very good. We're able to go ahead and get the uh, the land here. This is gonna trigger everything. 
Gain some life. I will take that. That's fantastic. Uh, and I think we just attack for the five in the air. I'm going to let these sit uh, because we are against an aggro deck. I don't just want to lose uh, by them kind of bolstering the board somehow and really getting a good attack in. So we'll see what they decide to do. If they attack in with everything, I'm kind of curious to see how this goes. Uh, if that's all they're attacking with, I think we just take the three. I'm not really worried about three damage when we can gain most of that back in a turn. Um, or at least a good portion of that back in a turn. So I think this is fine. I'm not going to block. Just in case they want that treasure token. Uh, and that's not really something I'm willing to give them. Okay. Um, well, that's certainly interesting. I'm not going to math this. We're just going to go for the cool play. <laughs> Normally I would for sure. But I'm not really, uh, not really feeling the math on this one. We're just going to go for the cool plays. Uh, let's go ahead and get another white source just because go ahead and put another one one on everything uh, That's great. That gives us trample. Um, yeah, so we win Cool, that's how the deck works. That's what we're trying to do every time legend VD amazing my friend Let's jump into game two right now What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And how do we feel about this? Um, I think OK, not great for sure. Uh, this is kind of an interesting start because we're very just like board focused. We're just kind of trying to get stuff onto the board, but uh, we do have quite a number of things we can pull off here. Um, cool. I'm going to start with the white source. I'd like to save these for when we have either of these two things down or both, ideally. Uh, and so this really opens up some great plays for us that I think will be a little more powerful. Uh, this is a complete whiff, which is great for us. Uh, it's just It just means they're down a card, which I will happily take. Um, I think we'll play the, the fledgling here. Um, we really want to save the Voice of the Blessed, I feel like, because this is going to be a Jund build, or excuse me, a Grixis build. So control is very much on the table at this point, which is a little scary. Uh, so I think here what we'll do is we'll throw out the Voice of the Blessed, and we'll see if they just kill the Fledgling here or the Voice of the Blessed after this. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, looks like they're not going to. I'm going to go this route. It's going to trigger everything. So again, they probably are going to kill something here if I, if they can. Um, which again is kind of fine. We've got plenty of stuff to, to capitalize later on. So I'm not super upset by this. Sure. Okay. Uh, so we are going to go get our green source here. This is going to gain us a life. So Voice of the Blessed gets to be a 3-3 now. And so now if they do have like a play with fire or, you know, some kind of two damage spell, at the very least, we're out of range of some removal. Obviously, they do run Infernal Grasp, though, so we do have to keep that in mind that they're probably going to be able to deal with this. Um, okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. So they're going to get a card into their hand, but again, it's kind of okay because we're about to like hopefully start kind of taking off a little bit here, which is uh, certainly ideal. So we'll see. Okay. I think we do play the Moon Dancer. Uh, I would like to go ahead and get that going. Let's do this. Uh, we could have also played the Fledgling and used this as more of a setup turn, but I think I'd rather go ahead and get some more stuff going. Wow, that's a great, great draw. Um, I think easy attack in here. If they want a two for one, as in burn it and uh, block it, which they decided not to do, I would have been fine with it. Uh, because at the very least, we're kind of two for one them on all that, uh, which is great. So I'm assuming they're going to use this for an Infernal Grasp, uh, which seems pretty reasonable to me. They're probably going to kill the Moon Dancer? No, the voice. Okay, cool. Fine by me. We should be able to take over this game on the upcoming turn, at least uh, somewhat. So let's do this. Let's do this. Uh, we'll throw a 1-1 one -one counter. Um, let's pull a second green source, I suppose. And let's actually go here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we take it. It's a life gain opportunity, so I'm kind of okay with it. Uh, the question is, do we attack here? I actually think we do. 
They can absolutely double block, which is not great for us, but it's also not the end of the world. We'll just kill that and take the loss there. That's okay. We've got the, the Felidar retreat down at this point, so I feel like we're kind of well positioned to, to take over this game regardless. We also know they run Infernal Grasps, and so it's not really worth it for us to consider too heavily keeping everything on the field. Chances are they're going to be able to kill stuff. Let's go ahead and pressure them as much as possible to make this game as short as possible, knowing that that's probably a possibility. Um, that may be a bit aggressive, but... I think it's still okay. One thing to note, we could have very easily kept it on the field for the Inspiring Overseer, though. That was an area where, yeah, we could have probably gotten a, a lot more powerful plays out of it, but that's okay. Okay, so... Let's do this first. Let's see what we draw. Awesome. Uh, let's drop this. Let's drop this. Um, and yeah, I mean, we actually just get to kind of soup everything up here a little bit. Uh, which is pretty good for us because it just means we get to attack in with the, uh, token this turn. Uh, for basically free. I mean, they can obviously block it, but it's, a uh, it's a chump block. So, I'm totally fine with that. They're just gonna take it. Uh, and now we are kind of threatening lethal next turn. So, they probably are gonna need to sweep or find another way to, to win this game. Um, that's fine. That just means they're probably not sweeping this turn, which is super good for us. Um, they do still have Kaito. That's a little scary, but, um, I mean, I think we're kind of okay, theoretically. We'll see. We're at 22, they're at 8. They've got a couple of 3-3s three on the field, but, I mean, I'm gonna take the block here if they kill it that's fine they're just trying to um trigger this without having to discard a card um and potentially burn the 4-4 but that's fine i don't really care they probably should have well they couldn't have i guess i was gonna say the uh the flying is actually their problem right now they can't really deal with the flying so that's good um let's do this let's see what we draw okay let's go ahead and drop the land let's do this um, so, I mean, this should, for all intents and purposes, be lethal. Yep. All right. Sick. We did it. That's two in a row, guys. Let's see if we can go for three. This has been really, really smooth so far. All right, guys. Here we are for our third game. Uh, and again, yeah, it's pretty easy keep. We've got the Lotus Cobra, too, which is actually quite nice. Let's go ahead and lead on this. This will give us that green source that we're going to need. As much as I would rather uh, wait to do that with the Lotus Cobra on the field, we do need to play the Lotus Cobra first. So that seems important. Um, okay. Uh, love that a little bit less, not going to lie. Um, okay, so let's Moon Dancer first. I think this is going to be a little bit better. Um, it just means that, you know, they can attack in, but we just don't block. And then they kind of can't minus one, minus one on the Moon Dancer. They can shock it or do something like that, which is annoying, but not the end of the world. Um, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we do this. We do this. Uh, we will add white. Um, we'll add another green source to the field since we have the second white. I actually really like Splendid Reclamation here for a number of reasons, so I'm going to keep that. And then we'll go ahead and play this out. Uh, not as good, of course, because they can just kind of... If they if they for some reason kill a Shambling Ghast for, what, for whatever purpose, um, they can kill one of our things. But at least we have to force the decision, uh, which is good. We do have the Splendid Reclamation next turn, too, which is going to be kind of ridiculous. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's do it. So if they want to do something to kill the Fledgling, that was the opportunity, and it looks like they didn't take it. So that's actually pretty important to know. Uh, we will add green. It doesn't really matter. Okay, how many of these are in the graveyard? Three. Excellent. <laughs> 
This is going to be a good turn, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, now, of course, Infernal Grasp is an issue, but uh, this should be a really solid turn for us. Um, we might be able to chain Reclamations, too. In fact, we definitely can. That's not a bad card. I'm going to keep it. I don't know if we need that, but like I'm super into it, so we're going to take it. Um, doesn't matter what we, what we give here. We get to Splendid <laughs> Reclamation for a lot. Um... All right, <laughs> this is the beauty of this deck. Legend VD, you did a great job, my friend. This is an absolute blast of a deck for sure. You just add a bunch of green, it really doesn't matter. Uh, we'll... And keeping in mind that this is going away now because we're, it, it really doesn't matter how we do this uh, because the deck's gonna get shuffled away. Uh, that's one little bit of a nombo, I guess you could call it, but the reality is it's it's kind of fine. Um, we'll add green. And we get to do this all over again. <laughs> That's kind of the crazy piece to all of this is that, you know, we get to do this another three times. So what, six more? Uh, this is amazing. I'm so in love with this deck. Legend VD, this is incredible. What's going to suck is if they have the Infernal Grasp, but they just get to kill one of the things, which is like super annoying, but we also have all the mana in the world out now and so anything we draw is like pretty killer um yeah <laughs> again doesn't matter we'll just go ahead and fetch out all the lands because why not doesn't matter this is insane i mean <laughs> that i actually do want to keep um yeah. I mean, so now we have a lethal attack, so that's good. Um, I guess we throw that on the bottom, because at this point we're more looking for action spells, not just lands. In case they kill all of our stuff, like that's a, a very real thing. Um, I think we just attack in with everything. Like they can obviously kill the Lotus Cobra, that's fine, I don't particularly care that much um at this point we've we've done all we need to do with the lotus cobra so like that's good okay so they're gonna kill it here um we still get 15 damage in so they're down to five uh that was what turn four technically was that turn four that's insane even if it's turn five that's insane look how much mana we have we have 10 mana and a. Uh, <laughs> a 10 10 and a 15 15 um yeah that's pretty good <laughs> i'm trying to think what they can do to win i mean if they kill the fledgling that's obviously a problem okay yeah i mean that's a pretty good play because they can drop the big token but that just dies next turn <laughs> i am not worried about ren i'm just attacking them uh, they literally have to block. Hopefully they don't have a sweeper this upcoming turn. They're, that's not unlikely in a deck like this because they do have the treasure token here. So totally get it if they do. Um, but we still did a really cool thing and I'm happy about that. <laughs> Chaining reclamations. We may not have needed to do that, but I mean, come on. We got to do the, as Theo would say, we, we got to do it for the style points. <laughs> All right, what's the opponent going to do? They're going to make a sack a creature. We definitely take the Moon Dancer since this has potentially flying. Uh, and so this is actually okay. While they completely whiffed on that. And they have a Valky with a land in hand. All right, I think we win. We just get to play land and win. Yes, haha. -ha! Undefeated run. Dude, that was so sick. Uh, and we rank up to gold too. All right, sick guys. Let's talk about this deck. All right, so amazing, amazing deck. Again, by Legend VD, a, a true great content creator. Go check him out. I will link him down below. Legend VD, thank you so much for sharing this list. 
the infrastructure and the foundation that you have created with this one is phenomenal. Uh, I don't know how many flex slots you would have in a deck like this, but I wonder if there is some room to kind of play around a little bit. Not that it needs it, but just to experience some other, you know, kind of different cards and see what can happen. Regardless, this deck is in incredible. Uh, absolutely love it. I had a blast. We obviously got an undefeated run with it. It just runs so smoothly, and it does a great job of deck thinning itself. Uh, and so you get you get to a point where you know obviously a land's not a bad draw, but later on in the game you can draw something a little more powerful. Um, absolutely phenomenal. The the landfall with the life gain is just so so strong right now, especially with those lands. I'm really glad that we get to feature those a little bit because I feel like they're kind of glossed over most of the time. But with splendid reclamation and of course that landfall package, it just does so much. So. Guys, this was incredible. I really hope you enjoyed this one. An undefeated run with this list. I'm so happy to say that was incredible. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you to Legend VD for sharing this list. Really do appreciate all the support, guys. Don't forget we have a giveaway going on right now as well for Battle for Baldur's Gate. Uh, we are giving away a draft booster box of the set on June 17th. Uh, that is a Friday, I believe. So do check that out. Details uh, are on our channel <laughs> somewhere or on our website. <laughs> Go to one of those. Thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you later.